11 years ago, the ambulance was speeding down the tracks of Vasilopet ski race because it was the closest way from Salen to the hospital in Mura. With a dying Dan Abra inside, suffering from seven broken bones, a punctured lung, the worst degree of concussion and a smashed left ball, it was urgent. Luckily, the ambulance made it in time, and after months and years of rehab, he was able to run again. Today, 11 years later, he's back on these bloody tracks to do his best to overcome the brutal 90 km distance that forever changed his life. Oh, and who's Dan Abra you're asking? I guess that would be me. What's up guys, my name is Dan Abra and welcome to my channel. I'm here to teach you about willpower and motivation and show you that anything is possible with the right mindset. So, this video is a bit emotional for me, as you guys saw in the intro. It's a 90 km race on skis and this race has two perks. Number one, I've never stood on this type of skis before in my whole life and apparently it's a super technical sport uh, so I look forward to that. Number two, I've been battling with a throat infection for about five years now that I just got rid of two months ago and it, it has made me not able to work any stamina whatsoever so essentially I start from scratch two months ago but enough of the excuses we are right here at the very start we're gonna go down tomorrow in exactly 20 hours we drove here super early went up at 5 so that we could get here before it got dark and get a quick training session in so i could feel the skis out see if i have any technique whatsoever i watch a lot of youtube videos but you can only do so much when you never even felt the gear before uh, so that's what we're going to do right now but first we're going to go over there and pick our tickets out so i look like a real participant and uh, yeah let's get into the action <laughs> Fifteen oh four one. The winner of Oslo for 2020. You heard it here first. All of these things are new gear. I don't own. I don't own a single piece of clothes that I have on me. I feel like I was made for this. You could never guess this is my first time. All right, which way? Which way? You decide. I'm gonna fall in every fucking slope. There's absolute zero control on this case. If it goes downhill, I'm fucked. So we finally found a slope, uh, which I think is gonna be my biggest enemy during this whole race. I figured out a way to get like upwards towards the slope. Ah, it will go fucking slow. But the idea is just to get up without losing too much energy and then I will make up for all the lost time in the like flat parts that I've yet to figure out the downhill so we're gonna try that very soon. <laughs> Last practice before tomorrow, downhill, let's go! Fuck, <laughs> it's So apparently I booked this little cute cabin in the woods. Thought it was be perfect sleep for um, before the big race tomorrow. And uh, first, when we get there, you have to park three kilometers outside of the cabin, and then you're supposed to ski to the cabin. And um, that being a little weird, Patrick the genius went um, into his internet to take a closer look at the description. And apparently, we booked like I booked. Um, a cabin without any form of electricity, heat, the only thing they had was oil lamps. It's not even water. Yeah, they didn't have even water, yeah, they, they like recommended rivers to walk to, to fill your buckets. Yeah, we just booked another one, like two hours away, so it's a great preparation, but um, yeah, I hope Airbnb gets my money back for that one, I don't know. <laughs> great start. And in that moment, all me and Patrick could think was, who the fuck puts up a cabin on Airbnb that doesn't have water or electricity? And this 
four kilometers from the closest road. Who walks four kilometers? Birds. It was really hard to keep our mood up at this point. But we couldn't let that bother us because we needed to get some food and sleep before the race tomorrow. So we went searching in nearby ski resorts for a small cabin that we could sleep in. So, uh, Danabro just made food for us. Let me show you what this is. <laughs> this is for me. This is pasta with, a uh, what do you call this shit? Meat. And, um, Danabra went wild and crazy. Which is actually stupid because I need the carbs for the race tomorrow, but they're, they're in the making. They are in the making. Six minutes. I'm gonna beat the world record in eating the most Kit Kats in one Vasalop. It was finally 8 o'clock. 15,000 skiers has gathered together. This was the moment we've been waiting for. All hell was about to break loose. All right, so apparently they started already, but we're stuck in this, uh, stuck in this line here. We didn't even get into the folder yet. Um, there's 10 different folders, and guess which one I'm in? It's number 10. The very first challenge was a four kilometer uphill climb, and we were about to pass through a very narrow stretch. And the tension was building up, because as you remember, I have never done this before. Just three minutes after the bell, the race went into a grinding halt. I had to wait for 14,000 people to pass that narrow stretch. We're not even in the competing area. This race is not about finishing first. It's about making it to the seven upcoming checkpoints before they cut the rope and hopefully finishing the race within the 12 hour mark. All right, so we made it to the first stop. Um, <coughs> 11 kilometers. We're essentially not even going in tracks. Like it's been snowing since last night, so there's just snow. As you can see, we're just paving in snow. Kitka is the only thing that would make me go further. I'm in a small village called um, Mongsbordarna, I think, and there is a GPS tracker on Dainabra. This is his stats right now, and he's currently in the middle between me and the starting point. And there has been almost, I'd say, about one and a half hours since the start. So there is about one and a half hours until he reaches us at this point here, which is a small turn where I'm going to give him KitKat and uh, Powerade and film him and ask him about how the race has gone so far, basically. It was now three hours and 30 minutes into the race. I just realized that this is going to be tougher than I could have ever imagined. I was already depleted of all my stored glycogen and I was moving towards that wall that everyone has told me about. You are fucking pain, man. I told you before that the race starts when one muscle doesn't function anymore. And it happened to my right shoulder, so... I got like six cramps all the way here. So I can barely use the right arm. So my pace has gone down like insane. This is salty. No, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> My triceps were now really cramping and I started to seriously doubt if I could make it to the next checkpoint in time without barely using my arms. I pressed on for about another hour and things continued to head for the worst. -na 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 -na. Oh fuck, the speed limit is 30. I was closing in on the next checkpoint, where my producer was waiting to check up on me. Fucking hurry to the next point, they're taking the rope. I need to fucking go. 
It was starting to get dark. I was now literally fighting against the clock. According to my GPS, I was not estimated to make it to the upcoming checkpoint. I had to step up. If I didn't make it to the Elders checkpoint within 11 hours, I was not allowed to finish the race. Holy fucking shit! We made it to the last control. I think we're seven minutes before they were taking the rope. Five, two, one kilometer left. Ah. Här och introducera på skid och i kombination med skidåkning så är det kanske inte miljö. I fucking did. I fucking made. I started crying at the last couple minutes. I feel fucking miserable and happy. I got a medal! I'm a winner! Did I win or no? I was close, right? Yeah. She didn't know English, it's fine. <laughs> I got a few minutes to catch my breath. That was fucking nuts. I've been battling for like 12 hours now. And just to clarify, the 11 hour mark was actually in the last village and that was the, after 81 kilometers. So that was a bit lucky for me. Uh, so I actually made it, I think like 10 minutes before they took the rope and I wouldn't have been allowed to finish the race. So super proud about that. And what I'm probably the most proud of about this race is that somewhere between like 30 and 40 kilometers, I was in the worst cramps of my life in my like triceps and back shoulders and like everything and I just kept pushing and like after a while uh, like an hour it just numbed all the pain and I could keep pushing so that was like a new mental limit for me and I surpassed that so if you guys want to learn how to get a stronger mindset and a winning mentality be sure to fucking smash that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next video Peace. Mwah.